Hello, in this video we're going to talk about what to do with the results of a MySQL query using PHP. So in a previous video we've talked about a connect script, which is what I'm pointing at right there. In a previous video we talked about how to write a simple query such as that. Now let's talk about what to do with it once you've got the information back. So in my last video I showed you that you can't do this, right? You can't just echo out the result. Now the result is what you get back from a successful call to that function. And I'll show you that this doesn't work and then you'll see where I'm going to go. So you get some kind of an error like this. Basically it says that hey that thing that you got back is not something that can be converted to a string. So let's begin this discussion. So you can't echo it, but what you can do with it is uh, print underscore r, and that is a call to a function which is used to display the contents of an array. So this thing is a is a resource, but it, you can display it a little bit better like this. And so we're not going to do pretty formatting in this video, but I think at the end of this video you'll have a better understanding for how this whole process works. So this isn't going to throw an error, so I get this thing of type MySQLi result. It's got like four fields and nine rows. So that what this what this is telling you is that uh, my query yielded nine rows, and each one of those rows has four fields. Right? This isn't worth a whole lot, but you can kind of see at this point. I think this helps to paint that picture that that thing that this represents, which this returned, is kind of a complex object. Right? It's kind of this thing. It's got nine rows. It's got four fields. So let's do something a little more meaningful with it. So here's the issue. You can't display it because there's just a lot of information there potentially. So what you need to do is pick it apart into the individual rows. And that's typically done with something like this. So generally, you create a variable called row. And you set that row equal to the result of a function call. And that function call is my SQLI underscore fetch underscore. Now you've got choices. You can do all array or ASOC to name a few. I'm going to do ASOC because I think that's the one that makes uh, the most sense for me. And this function needs to be passed a result like that. All right, we'll talk about kind of what's happening here. This is more of a discussion video than a you know, practical programming video. And then now that's the kind of thing you can definitely do a print R on, and it might actually make some sense. So this function right here is kind of interesting. So what it does is it takes this result, and like I said, there was nine rows to it. It will fetch the first row. The first time you call it and the next time you call it it'll fetch the second row and the next time you fetch it it'll call fetch it'll grab the third row so let me show you what this yields so if I refresh again the first row is right it's got an ID of one a name of scattles a category of hard shell and a calories of 200 if I want to show you the underlying table the underlying table looks like uh, right here's row one ID one scattles hard shell so if I were to do something, if I were to do this process again, it would grab the next thing. So let me show you, so I, like I said, there's fetch ASOC. Let me show you what fetch, um, fetch all does. Just showing you there are different functions we can use to fetch the rows. Just showing you the results here. All right, this is more of an educational video than a practical video. Just notice that the, oh, so fetch all grabs you, uh, it doesn't just grab you the, the row that you wanted, it grabs you all of the rows. It's, it's a little bit similar, I guess you could kind of sort of think of it like that. Tons of excessive information. And then the other one is a uh, fetch ASOC. Or sorry, I said a uh, fetch, fetch array. And then the other, right, I told you there was three of these. In reality, there are more, but I'm just showing you a handful just to kind of show you where these functions and the choice of them change things a little bit. If I do fetch array, I get the same information that I got from fetch ASOC, but instead of saying like ID one, uh, oh, actually, I'm getting all that stuff, but I'm also getting this indexed array as well. So I'm getting like 0 is 1, ID is 1, 1 is scattles, name is scattles, 2 is hard shell, category is hard shell. So I'm literally getting this associative array. That's what the ASOC means. It's an associative array. An associative array is when, you, when your keys have names like calories. An indexed array is when, you're, when your keys are just numeric. So you can probably see why I prefer ASOC, because ASOC is just a little bit easier to read. Um, fetch array is a little bit wasteful because it gives you everything that ASOC gives you and it also gives you that indexed array which isn't the easiest thing to work with and the fetch all that I showed you a minute ago that was a different one which gives you every single row from the query alright so let me show you the kind of magic here so if you wanted to actually let me redo that 
So if you wanted to display this or kind of see how it works, let me show you a technique for looping through this data. So this right here basically fetches a row. So what you can do is you can take that and you can embed that, if you want to call it embedding, in a while loop, right? So I took that assignment statement and I'm wrapping it in a loop and I can take this print R and I'm going to put that right here. And I also want to echo out a, a line break because I'm pretty sure I need one of those. Otherwise, everything's going to get mashed together. But this is basically the technique that you use to parse through a, 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 a query result. And I'm going to do fetch ASOC because it's easier to read. So what this is going to do is it's going to, first time through, it's going to grab the first row, print out the first row, print out a line break. Then it's going to grab the second row, print out the second row, print out, print out a line break. And I'll show you what this looks like. Right, that's... You know, that's not what you would ever want to display on an actual web page, but you can see uh, a lot better what's actually happening right there. And so the process of actually turning that into usable information, well, that's just kind of a bridge that you'll need to cross on your own. But let me try and do the best I can with it. So rather than just this print R, print R is just a debugging tool. What you might want to do is some kind of a more structured echo like uh, this. So like, let's say I just want to print out the uh, names of the candies. So if I just wanted to print out the name of the candy, what I would do, more or less, is I would say I want to, that row variable which stores the row. If you wanted to just print out a particular field, it's an array and you have to index into it as such, so square brackets and then the name of the field that you want to spit out. That's pretty much the recipe. So what that would do is that would spit out the name of every candy. And that's not going to work. I, I always debate, should I make a mistake or not make a mistake? So that didn't exactly work. So what you need to do is you're not allowed to index into an array inside of an echo. So there's a couple ways you can handle it. The easiest way to handle it is just take that, that part where you're indexing into an array and wrap it in curly braces. You're definitely allowed to do that. So now I go and I view my results. And now I have what I was looking for. Right, so that just raw print R was kind of cool in terms of showing you what you had to work with. But in reality, you probably don't want to, you're, there's no way you're just going to dump the print R on the screen. What you would want to do is pick, pick out particular fields and display them something like that. So this script right here is going to process the query. And this little repetition structure right here can be used to iterate through the individual results. And this line right here is you know, spitting out a formatted output as opposed to just a, the dumping of the contents of the array on the screen, which is what print R did. So print R is just kind of a goofy tool that we can use for debugging, and it was something that I used to illustrate what was happening. But in reality, what you're going to want to do is something like this. In the real realm of an actual web page, probably what you would want to do is, is, is create a table of results, and that's what I'm going to show you how to do in the next video. Thanks for watching.